I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say it's been easy. You know, you've just got married and that's your husband and it's so cute. I'm smiling, but it's been hard. It's been really hard. If you are arguing in the house, people are going to hear and that's uncomfortable. And then you have to go out and look them in the eye. <sighs> oh my goodness. My heart has suddenly started beating really fast. It's just a chatty video. It's just a chatty video. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'm just feeling quite nervous. Hang on. Let me change my background colour. Okay, hello everybody, assalamu alaikum, or welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, a really, really big welcome. Today I'm gonna be doing just a chatty, sit down, casual talking video with you all. A lot of you guys have asked me questions about living with my in-laws, and I just thought instead of like addressing it in vlogs and on Instagram and bits and bobs, I just thought I would do one video about it. It is one of those topics where I know it's something that people are like quite nosy and interested to know about. I understand that. I've watched, you know, videos myself of people talking about their experience living with in-laws. I have to say, Alhamdulillah, I'm really, really blessed with the in-laws that I have been given. You guys will know this if you watched my car Q&A video, which was filmed and posted shortly after I got married, because when we got married, we stayed in Dundee for a whole Christmas holiday, so straight after the wedding, and then up until a week before the Valima, we were here in Dundee, and obviously I was staying with in-laws then. And like, honestly speaking, neither me nor Wakar had ever planned on living with either of our in-laws at any point in our marriage. That wasn't on the cards for us, that wasn't our plan, but as is always the case, Allah plans and Allah's plan is better, and you know, God knows best. So I'm not going to go into the whole like what our actual plan was because if you're a long time viewer, you will know what the plan was. And if you're not, then you can catch up on our videos. And, and you know, I talk about it a lot. I talk about how things didn't work out. And so from September 2019 up until now, I have been living with my in-laws. And so I'm living in my husband's house where he grew up in. Literally, this is like his childhood house. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say it's been easy. But I also know that it could be a lot, lot harder. You know, from the conversations I've had with my sister-in-law. Also, so I have three sister-in-laws. My husband has two sisters. And then his older brother is married. So I have three sister-in-laws in total at the moment. And then he has a younger brother as well. So one day, inshallah, I'll have four sister-in-laws, which is so cool. Um, and then I have two of my own sisters. So just so many like sisters and now brothers in my life, alhamdulillah. But yeah, like I have conversations a lot about the whole, you know, living with family versus not living with family. And we can all agree, and I genuinely wholeheartedly believe and agree that, you know, the situation that I'm in is so much easier and better than a lot of people. You know, that you get some in-laws out there who are very controlling. They wanna control the times you wake up, the, the clothes that you wear, the kinds of food that you make, where you go, like set curfews. And unfortunately, that's a reality for so many people. So the first thing I wanna say is that Alhamdulillah, like I'm very blessed that that's not the situation for me. That's not the case for me. But honestly and truly, I I know this is hard. Like I don't wanna come across as like, as saying that if you have a situation, you're to blame. I'm not saying that, but I really believe it's important to be open with your other half, the person you're going to marry before you get married and discuss things like that. Discuss what the situation is at home with his sisters and what are there any restrictions, are there any limitations, are there any rules in place? Because more than likely, if you're moving into that house and living with a the family, then you're going to be expected to abide by those rules as well. And I wasn't asking those questions because it was my intention to live with my in-laws. I was just asking them just to get an idea in a sense of the family. I actually come from a stricter upbringing than my husband has, so, you know, we've had slightly different upbringings, but, you know, we're both Pakistani, we're both British born, and we both have very similar beliefs in Islam, we're both Sunni, we're both Hanafi, so well, there's a lot of similarities there, but obviously every single family is going to be different, and just because there are so many similarities doesn't mean that then moving into my husband's family's house meant that life was going to be 
even remotely the same and there's so many pros and cons there are so many pros and cons I can't even explain like I said in my car Q&A video I said in that video that I you know we don't plan on living with in-laws but I feel like if the situation arises where we have to I definitely could do so happily and that has alhamdulillah been the case on the whole I've been really really happy here and if I have been unhappy it's mainly because I'm missing my family and it's mainly because I am so far away from them now and I never have been far away from them I went from living with my family my whole entire life to then living with just me and my husband in our apartment for seven months to then moving in with his family um, here in Scotland so those were both big jumps and to be honest with you I really think that if you get married and move straight in with your in-laws you have it a lot easier a lot easier because your new reality your new normality your new life has begun in so in somebody else's house and that's what's normal for you and that's fine you can adjust to that you can learn you can pick up things quickly you can set yourself into a routine quickly I think because me and Wagar we had our own place our own space we felt like totally independent adults and we got a taste of what it was like to live alone then from going to living alone to then moving in with your in-laws that is really really tough because suddenly and this is like I'm going to talk about like one of the negatives first your own space that we had so we had a two-bedroom apartment we had our own kitchen our own bathroom our own toilet and two bedrooms um it wasn't really big it wasn't really spacious but it was the perfect place for like our marriage to start and I loved it there the only thing that was hard about it was it was incredibly expensive like over half of my wage and over half what I was making was going to just living expenses rents bills etc so the advantage of spending so much money was that you do get your own space and that's really nice and so we were able to have the majority of the first part of our our year of being together in our own space and learning to adapt to one another and understanding one another and then we would come up to Scotland and we would spend evenings with my parents as well my family as well but we had our own space and that I really really valued and then obviously when you go from having your own space to then moving in with a family that's taken away and that's hard that is really really hard like when I was living with my family at home your own space does kind of become just your bedroom and that's hard because like you know I film videos and filming takes up a lot of space you need to have space for your camera space for your lights space for your microphone and it's doable of course it is doable in small space but it's much much easier to film when the space is all yours rather than having to combine it all to one space I do feel like we are a lot more cramped here and um, I feel like basically a lot of our belongings are up in the attic and so I am living off a capsule wardrobe and I have been for the last eight or so months and that's not the end of the world at all but it's just little things like that like being able to quickly go and get something out is not as easy as it would be you know if we had everything sort of on one level and nearby and easy to reach so for me one of the hardest things has definitely been like losing our own space and also having to confine what we had back into one small space because that was what it was that was the case when I was in my own parents house you know like I still was filming there and it was hard and it took up a lot of space and, and my room would become a mess a lot and I feel like that's basically I've gone back like three steps to that whereas with the apartment my room or well, our room was a place for us to sleep and then it was where I had proper wardrobe set up and it was it was all sorted basically and then I had space for like my camera and film equipment to be outside of the room you know it was just a bit easier in that sense and so for the time being the fact that we don't have that is a bit difficult and I would say the second hardest thing for me absolutely the hardest thing for me is being a hijabi and living with my in-laws because I have brother-in-laws and obviously my father-in-law as well. I don't think you have to wear a hijab in front of your father-in-law, but I do out of respect. I try to keep my head covered out of respect. And so there's very rarely any time when you can let your hair breathe. And obviously 
like you guys know if you're a hijabi as well that the first thing you, you tend to do when we come home is take our hijab off take our hair bubbles out and just let air go through our hair you know oil our hair whatever whatever and then I feel like I can only really do that in my room and so I need to do that for a couple of hours and then I'm in my room and like my door shut and then I start feeling like oh, I'm gonna be unsociable what are people gonna think I don't want to offend anybody so that's really hard honestly I didn't realize how tough it would be to be a hijabi at home when you have to you know maintain that modesty and that haya because it has been eight months as well you know for like maybe a couple of weeks that's not too difficult but i do struggle with that absolutely i do just even stuff like movie night i still have to and i'm i want to say i have to like no one's forcing me but in my heart like i feel like it's the right thing to do is just to keep my head covered moving on to some positives of living with your in-laws the nice thing about having more than one woman in the house is that the housework tends to be a lot more shared so my sister-in-law and my um my mother-in-law and myself this is three women who live in this house permanently and then my husband's two sisters one of them lives in london and she's here for the lockdown period she came here and then lockdown started and she's, she's been here since which has been nice to like really get to know her properly and it's been nice for her because she's been back in like a childhood home and stuff and then my other sister-in-law she lives like in Edinburgh for half the time and then she comes here when she's not working due to work but yeah so it's just me my mother-in-law my sister-in-law and we now have divided everything really really fairly and equally and the nice thing about that is that you don't have to constantly be maintaining such a big house which it would be quite difficult I think well I know it would be and cooking for a lot of people every single day would be difficult so the nicest thing about living with your in-laws is that you have a little bit more time for yourself because you're not spending every single evening in the kitchen you're not spending every single day maintaining the chores and the cleaning and, and the laundry and whatnot like you have your own specific days so that's definitely something that I appreciate so much and something that I'm gonna miss when we eventually move out is you know having to then go back to maintaining the household by yourself uh, it's gonna be an adjustment but I know I can do it because I've done it before whilst working full-time but I have learned and picked up so many tips and traits I'm learning to cook during this lockdown period and I've become much more confident with my cooking as well because mashallah we're a very big family whereas before in the apartment I was just like there's no point in me like trying to learn to cook because it's just me and Mukar and yes I could take food to my family but you know like working full time it was just hard it was really hard whereas now I have much more time in my hands you guys know I was unemployed for six months and so I had more time to just start learning to cook a lot of English dishes and now since my sister-in-law has been down from London I've been learning a lot of Asian dishes which I've been putting up on my channel in my vlogs so definitely check those out if you're interested or if you're in the same boat as me where it's like yeah I can make a really really good chicken wrap but I kind of want to learn how to make a nice palau now definitely check those videos out because I am was in the same position I'd, I'd made stuff before here and there but not confidently and when you are feeding a big family you know you there's a bit more of that pressure to get things right and the really lovely thing about my in-laws is that they have never ever ever once made me feel like a failure or like I have messed something up or and when I have made mistakes which I have in the kitchen they're always so kind about it and I love that because that makes you want to just keep going and keep trying to cook because sometimes cooking can be stressful and they're just so supportive in that sense which I love so that's been a huge like personal development for myself is having time to be able to learn like specific dishes and learn to cook and increase my confidence is it's gonna go a long way for the rest of my life because if I can master these skills now inshallah you know when we have our own family and we have our own house like that won't be something that I have to worry about as well because I'll have already done it which is good okay this is a little bit of a sensitive tricky thing to talk about but when you are living in a big family and when you're living in your in-laws it's very different to living in your own house you know in your own house where you've grown up you can be unfiltered you can be uncensored when you're in a bad mood you don't have to kind of put on an act for your family because they know like okay because I'm one of her moods 
it's best to like just not have this particular conversation right now or you know with siblings like you just make excuses for each other because you know whereas when you're with your in-laws there is a certain level of like respect that you should keep I think and that you kind of have to keep and after time like you you see people at their worst of times and they see you at your worst of times and that's just what happens like you don't really know someone until you live with them and my idea before I got married was that I don't feel like you should have to know your in-laws to the depth that you do you know your husband for example because you shouldn't have to see them at their lowest or their worst and vice versa but obviously like that situation has happened and Altamazala has wanted that to happen and that's what I keep thinking like we wouldn't be in a situation if it wasn't what Allah had written for us and so I always try and see a positive from any situation that arises and you know things happen in families like, and Alhamdulillah like it's been a really peaceful time here but What I'm trying to say here is that like when I'm in a bad mood, I can't truly be in a bad mood unless I lock myself away in my room, which is what I, especially when I'm really emotional and I'm missing my family, or I'm missing my friends, or I'm feeling low about work or whatever it is, then I will lock myself away in my room and then I will feel guilty for it, you know? I can't really deal with my emotions the way I would if I if we had our own place. And that's been hard, that's been really hard. And in the same vein, like if somebody else in the house is in a bad mood, you have to remind yourself not to take it personally. You have to remind yourself that like they're just human, just like you. And like, just because I happen to be in the same room and get like a, a whiff of that mood, that doesn't mean it's got anything to do with me, you know? So it's about learning to adjust to how people are, how the temperaments are, not overthink, definitely try not to take things personally and just think that you know everybody is a human being nobody's perfect and you can't be happy all the time and if you can't be happy all the time then nobody can be happy all the time you know so yeah I think trying to be there for people but not to be too intrusive or invasive even if you're living in the same house it's a difficult balance to get but you have to try and get to that I think. Okay another positive about living with the in-laws is the amount of quality time that you get to spend with them because you're there every single day you are much more likely to sit and spend more time with them than if you were living away and then you were just coming for like an hour in the week. I get to see so much more of my niece and nephew now and see their milestones and you know I've seen my nephew since he was like literally a newborn now mashallah he's like almost two months and just seeing him every single day seeing him like little changes a little growth and then with my niece she's just developed in the most amazing way in the last eight months mashallah she's talking so much and she actually really is intrigued by my youtube channel and the fact that I make videos and she was saying that she wanted to make a video with me and um, her parents were saying they, they don't, wouldn't mind if I wanted to do that as well so if you'd like to see a video of my niece let me know down below she is an absolute cute by mashallah she is three years old and that has honestly been one of the best things about living with my in-laws is having this beautiful quality time with the kids the babies the little ones that I will never ever get ever again and also that I've never had before because apart from your own siblings even your cousins you're not gonna be able to really see their milestones and see everything they go through unless you're living with them and so it's been really really lovely to have that experience and I've had a really good insight into motherhood and it has confirmed for me that I'm definitely not ready for it yet you know inshallah when Allah wills but for now like it's confirmed to me that being a mum and I knew this already before obviously but like seeing it firsthand every single day day in day out has been really really helpful because you, you just see how much you know parents sacrifice their children how much patience they have to have it also has shown me and Mukar as well that we want to do a couple of things first and like be a bit more settled before we would like that to happen for us and you know god god willing inshallah that does happen for us one day definitely like living with our nieces and nephews has taught us so much and I feel like it has really helped to prepare us. I know being an auntie and uncle is nowhere near the same as actually being a parent and going and doing the whole parent thing and 
pregnancy and giving birth and all the rest of it like that's very different to just you know babysit not even babysitting but like look after them for a, a little while each day it's very different but yeah uh it's taught us a lot and it's been an absolute pleasure and it, i do think about this a lot if the plans had gone to what we had thought they would and we were living abroad like i just would never know these little little perks and quirks of their personalities and I would never be able to see them to the depth I have now which is such a blessing and you know in the future when we are living in our own place like we will still inshallah inshallah always be close to them but this time we've had now this bonding time I hope inshallah like that love and connection that we've built with them stays for the rest of our lives now and that they always know that we're always here for them no matter where we are in the world because they've seen us day in day out for the last eight months and yeah, just that love is, is just so beautiful and I'm very, very grateful for that. Okay, um, let's talk about another negative or con to living with your in-laws is definitely navigating marriage, especially because we are still in our, like, first two years of marriage, like, we've passed our one-year mark. And I was watching Aisha Haroon's video and they actually got married a similar time to us and they're a similar age to us, mashallah, and... I love like watching her video of her husband and they're just so different those two like he's such an introvert she's such an extrovert and they were talking about marriage and arguments and she's actually said like she answered a question that said like is the first year of marriage the hardest and she said actually I think it's not even though a lot of people think it is and she was like I don't think it is because that first year you're still in this like honeymoon cutie phase of like not really like truly being yourself like if you argue you hold yourself back because you you know you've just got married and that's your husband and it's so cute and then after a year like that's when by this point you would have had raging arguments probably you would have seen each other at your worst probably you would have been through some uncomfortable experiences together you would have had disagreements on maybe minor or major life life things and so after a year is where really you don't hold back anymore and for us like i'm smiling but it's been hard it's been really hard we've had a lot to handle and i don't think that i'm gonna like speak about this on the internet you know go into ins and outs but we have had like some big big tests in our marriage already and when you are in this delicate phase of going for a really hard test that Allah's given you and trying your best to understand it and to support each other and to accept the fact that this is what you have to go through at this time and then you also don't have your own space to go through that it's super tough because we have argued in the house and then it's very uncomfortable because you know you want to say something to each other but you don't really want everybody to hear but sometimes you know in an argument you your voices get raised and things get said and it is between you and your husband but ultimately if you are arguing in the house people are gonna hear and that's uncomfortable and then you have to go out and look them in the eye and speak to them and especially as a woman like I get very very emotional like when we argue and then I find it very hard to keep it inside as well uh, especially if I'm so angry like it will still it will be like in my it will be in my mind on my tongue in my heart like I really have to fight to just not explode with, with what's just happened and it, it's hard like I think with the with our apartment like we we're able to give each other space we we're able to deal with arguments without anybody being there and like alhamdulillah like we're lucky because it's not like we have the type of in-laws who are very intrusive or who would even ever come up to either of us and be like heard the argument like that's that's tough like maybe next time you should do this or maybe you know don't say this or whatever like alhamdulillah it's not the case at all we have really understanding in-laws um who know that marriage goes through ups and downs who knows that when you're faced with a lot of difficulty your marriage is gonna be shaken and they understand but what i'm saying is like from a comfortability point of view it's tough because you don't want to be having certain conversations but you have no choice because that's where you live you know and that is hard i found that hard myself and i think we kind of struggled with that as well we you just you just have to get on with it you just have to and you have to also understand that 
everyone who's an adult in the house understands that this is adult relationships this is marriage like it's not gonna be sunshine rainbows butterflies honeymoon period like oh we love each other all the time absolutely not yeah it's been tough it's been tough but alhamdulillah still we're, we're still standing <laughs> all right so this is a long video i know but i'm sure you expected that the last thing I wanted to end on was definitely like a positive and that is one of the things that I have loved the most about living with my in-laws um, is the amount of quality evening time we get to spend together, the movie nights. I never used to be a movie person but since lockdown started like we watched so many movies and like we just bond over that a lot as well and just for me it's like the first time in my life I've had older and I have alhamdulillah now older siblings like I have like an older brother and I have three older sisters and then I have a younger brother and obviously I have a younger brother and younger sisters like blood relatives but I've been able to spend time with my siblings in law who I don't I don't see them as like in laws at all like I see them as my siblings and each of them have their own like amazing traits and amazing qualities and we all learn from each other we share things together we help one another and it's just the most beautiful thing so I'm so happy that because I live with my in-laws I've had the chance to experience that because sometimes I, I do think about the fact that if we had done what our plan was and if we never had this opportunity to live as a family unit I would always have a little bit of distance between our siblings um just that the fact of not really knowing them and not really seeing them um, in the morning or when they're really hungry or when they're really tired or them seeing me when I'm going through stress or whatever obviously there's still like a level of respect and a level of filter there but it's the sort of walls being broken down and it's in a nice way and that's what I was quite anxious about first I was a bit worried that like oh I don't really want like his siblings to see me looking my worst or you know <laughs> all of these things but that's what they mean when they say you don't really know someone until you live with them like now I can say that they've seen me looking my worst feeling my worst and like just not in the best place and they still love care for me they still want what's best for me they still are there for me and that's so nice because you don't really ever get that with anyone to be honest like unless you've lived with your family your cousins or like your friends you don't often get that relationship and that bond and I, alhamdulillah I feel like in the last like eight months we have built such a beautiful bond and genuinely like I'm so grateful for it because I've always wanted older siblings and now I've I finally got them and like for Bukhara as well like this Ramadan's been really special because he's actually not done a Ramadan with his family for about six years he's always been in Pakistan or in Saudi or last year he was in Milton Keynes so this year like he's really been able to bond with his brothers and I've really got close to my sister-in-laws and yeah just knowing that there are people in my family you know who have been through things and seen things that I haven't experienced I can go and talk to and get advice from and vice versa it's just the nicest thing ever and it definitely helps with like me missing my own friends and family and like me being lonely like don't get me wrong I still miss them a lot and I still have days where I just feel really down and really sad but having that family around me is just the nicest thing ever and I'm really grateful for it so just to wrap this video up we didn't ever expect to be in the situation but we've taken so much from it alhamdulillah we've learned so much from it it's not the ideal scenario in t especially for me in terms of space but that's one small like kind of negative thing compared to like so many positives that we can take and moving forward like we're definitely going to be having our own space again because that's what we'd always wanted that's what we always planned that's what we did have before um, our plans were changed so we're definitely gonna have our own space but I'm really grateful that we got this time here because for me I was really able to get to know them and Wukar as well was they as they've been able to see like such a beautiful relationship develop between me and his siblings which I know he really appreciates like we were sitting there the other day and I was talking to my younger brother-in-law about school and teachers and stuff and like we we're just having a proper good chat and then Wakai was just smiling and then afterwards he was like I just realized like how much you've just become a part of our family and it's just so nice 
and yeah that makes me really happy so i'm grateful i'm so so grateful for the opportunity i'm so so grateful for the experience even though it hasn't it hasn't been easy i'm not gonna lie you know people who say like oh yeah it's totally easy it's totally it's like living with my, at my own parents house like i don't know there's i don't think it can be ever like that but you learn to adapt you learn to take the positives you learn to grow and, and mature up and you it kind of helps you become the person you always needed to be you know so i'm very grateful for that guys my mouth is dry my throat is dry i need to stop talking um <laughs> and i am gonna go now for our one daily walk allowance so i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna leave us here any advice for anyone who's about to move in with their in-laws i think i could probably do a whole different video on that actually so if you want to see that leave it down below alhamdulillah it's been good it's been real <laughs> and i will see you in my next video i hope you enjoyed it hit thumbs up if you did click subscribe if you haven't already and yeah i'll see you soon bye guys